Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Today we are in Nice on the French Riviera where a big summit between African countries and France is taking place. Today we're honored to welcome the president of South Africa, Jacob Zuma. Mr. Zuma, thank you very much for coming on France 24. This is your first Africa-France, as they're called, summit. What do you expect of it? Well, firstly, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, well, we, we expect that uh, a lot will take place in terms of the interaction between France and Africa, particularly if you, if we, if we take the uh, challenges that face Africa and as well as the history of France with Africa. And I'm sure this will, will be <clears throat> very timely because there are very current issues which we need to exchange with France as a member of the EU, and I'm sure uh, also as a country on its own right uh, to have a discussion with us. I'm sure we are coming to, 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 to raise issues that we believe France could do something. In other words, to, to try to deepen our relations with France as the continent. Uh, as you mentioned, France has a past in Africa, a colonial past. Uh, many countries this year celebrate their 50th anniversary uh, since uh, independence. Some people in Africa are uneasy about those celebrations and France holding a summit. What's your view on this? What is important in my view today, which must remove the anxiety, is what is it that we are able to do together to better the lives of our people, to deal with the challenges that face all of us today, assisted by countries like France who have that kind of a very, very important history with the continent of Africa. So you're expecting more economic ties than diplomatic relations? Definitely. Economic, they're crucial. You could have diplomatic relations. If, if people are in poverty, uh, there's a lot of illiteracy, etc. they don't say much if there are no tangible things that change the quality of lives of the people in the continent. There are challenges, for an example, in the continent of conflicts that from time to time occur. How much we are trying to stop them, those which are current, and how much we stop, for an example, what Africa has unanimously taken a position that we do not accept people who overthrow governments that have been diplomatic, I mean, that have been democratically elected as legitimate governments and people come in and, and, and we say, what can we help? Uh, what can be the help that France brings to ensure that we don't have those kind of things happening? And where there is conflict, how could we work together to stop the conflict so that we bring about peace? Because in the continent of Africa, the, one of the major obstacles to development is conflicts. How do we deal with conflict so that we could open up the way for more democratic uh, <clears throat> countries as well as uh, changing the quality of life in the continent. Speaking of countries where governments, democratic elected governments have been overthrown by military, we have two examples recently in West Africa, Guinea, Guinea uh, and Niger. Uh, the heads of the military junta were nevertheless invited to the summit. Do you think this is a good thing uh, because maybe they've announced elections to come, or do you have a problem with that? No, Africa does have a problem. <clears throat> Africa does have a problem. Of course, they are invited by France in its own name and right for its own reasons, but the continent does have a, a problem because you are dealing with a situation where we don't want to encourage <clears throat> military people to overthrow others and become uh, governments. Because by, by inviting, it means recognition. Uh, that's how we are interpreting it in the continent. I'm sure France could argue differently, but that's our position. We would want those people not to be recognized, because if they are recognized here, almost at the same level like all other heads of states, that's a problem that Africa has, because it does not help uh, to promote our stand that those people must not be recognized, not just recognized, they must not be allowed to undertake coup d'etat, because it, it is against the democratic culture that we are trying to entrench in the continent of Africa. Okay, one other person who's not invited. 
here actually is uh, the president of Sudan. There's an arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court against him. I know South Africa has been very involved in the diplomatic process. How do you deal with Mr. Al-Bashir in, in public events uh, like here or others, maybe like the World Cup? So we don't have a problem with France not inviting him because I think the reasons are very, very clear. Uh, <clears throat> but with regard to Africa, as you know, Africa uh, appealed <clears throat> to the ICC uh, to defer the arrest of, of Bashir for very, very clear reasons insofar as uh, AU was concerned. You were dealing with Darfur, where the process of trying to establish peace was at a very delicate stage. Anything that would happen, with Bashir in particular, could have reversed that process a great deal. So the African continent said, we don't say Bashir must not be arrested, but we say defer the arrest so that we are able to deal with the problem. At least we are able to have peace so that even if anything happens to Bashir, it does not reverse the things in, 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 in Sudan. That was our position. I mentioned uh, the World Cup. It's starting very soon. Obviously a big event for Africa, for South Africa. Uh, you spent a decade in jail, nearly two decades in exile. Did you ever think that you would preside over the opening and the closing ceremony of such a world event? I don't think it could have crossed my mind at the time. It couldn't, partly because it had never come to the continent of Africa. Nobody knew at what point will it come. And of course, we're also influenced by the prejudices that the developed world has always had about the continent. So it had never crossed the mind at the time. But certainly, once South Africa was free and were able, for an example, to host the international rugby uh, tournament, cricket tournament, and South Africa as a country was coming in from a totally different angle with very critical constitutional democracy. And I think at that point, we began to feel we could host this one. That's why we, 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 we also said, can we host it? Uh, at first, as you know, we lost the opportunity uh, in a very narrow kind of margin. And I think that became the kind of issue. So even if you had not thought of it during the, the Robben Island, during the struggle, but once we were free, uh, it became very clear that anything was a possibility. I think the fact that we saw uh, our icon, Nelson Mandela, lifting a trophy in rugby, I think that began to say to South Africans, we can do as much as other countries can. Let me ask you about something that came up a few weeks ago. Uh, someone, a military commander in Iraq, said that someone from Al-Qaeda had been arrested and that that person was planning a terrorist attack during the World Cup in South Africa. Is this true? Have there been terrorist threats? Is this a concern? Well, <clears throat> firstly, the fact that somebody has been arrested, I think it must indicate the level of interaction, cooperation that is existing. We have succeeded to work with every country in terms of security. <clears throat> we have even encouraged countries to bring their own securities with their teams to ensure that nothing of that nature happens. To me, once I heard about that, it indicated the success of this cooperation, that there is nowhere where terrorists could plan anything without being detected, because we are cooperating very much. So you're not throughout. scared? Not scared at all. We are ready. We think from the security point of view, we are fine. Nothing wrong is going to happen. Do you think this will help South Africa politically, economically? I mean, there have been uh, s some tensions, some problems. Do you think the World Cup can really boost South Africa? Absolutely. <clears throat> Economically, there has been <clears throat> absolutely important economic activities. In fact, part of what was a shock absorber to us with regard to <clears throat> the financial recession was because of the huge investment that had gone to the infrastructure for uh, the, the Soccer World Cup. It has therefore <clears throat> a brought such developments that would remain a legacy to us huge employment, etc. We also think it takes the, the South African position at a higher level. I think South Africa is being exposed to the world. Uh, people who, are, who would not ordinarily have come to South Africa, maybe they would have come uh, after a long time. They've come now because of the World Cup. They're going to see South Africa, that the opportunities in South Africa 
are just too many. And it's a beautiful country. But it has also done something to us because we believe as a country united in our diversity, as different ethnic groups, <clears throat> sport is one single kind of activity that really cuts across ethnic groups. Especially groups football, because rugby and cricket are more for the white minority. Yes, right? exactly. Especially football. But what has happened with football is that even the whites have come in in a big way as part of the nation's excitement to receive the <clears throat> soccer fans that are coming in. So I think it is going to leave South Africa at a different level altogether. Let me ask you uh, the last question. On June 22nd, there is a game in Blomfontein, I believe, between France and South Africa. When the referee wh uh, whistles the end of the game, what will you read on the scoreboard? I think, I think there are two things that are going to happen in that game. Either it will be a draw or it will be one nil for South Africa, in favor of South Africa. <laughs> and who will win the World Cup? <clears throat> Of course, the World Cup is difficult to, uh, to suggest that, but we know that South Africa is the background of the supporters that are fully there. We are very much looking forward to us towards uh, winning it. But of course, as you know, World Cup has big teams. Uh, for us to do so, we'll have to be a big team indeed, and we've been trying to prepare ourselves. We are <clears throat> thinking that we are going to surprise the world with Bafana Bafana. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mr. President, for coming on the France 24 interview, and thank you for watching it. Thank you very much. <laughs>